Oh, I can't, sorry, I, I can't answer right now. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Floyd Stokes and we are uh, reading 365. And I am joined by two fantastic readers, uh, Una Martone, who is the executive director of Leadership Harrisburg and so many other hats she wears. And she wears them so well, beautiful hats, Una. And we <laughs> thank you for them. <laughs> and we also have Rabbi Ariana Kaptaber and uh, she, both of them, uh, she's gonna be reading a book uh, to us as well. And we'll hear more about Hanukkah and we're so excited to have her join us this afternoon. So um, first we're going to hear from uh, Ariana. And what do you have for us this afternoon, please? Yeah, thanks Floyd. So um, I have a book on Hanukkah. This is called The Eight Nights of Hanukkah. And Hanukkah is um, a holiday that Jewish people celebrate around the same time as Christmas every year. But um, while Christmas is one night, our holiday Hanukkah happens over eight nights. Um, and so each night of Hanukkah, we light something called the menorah. Um, I have one here to show you. Um, there is a candle for each night. So tonight is gonna be the sixth night. So, oh, actually I have only five candles here. I need one more. Um, tonight is gonna be the sixth night of Hanukkah. So we'll light six candles. And the reason that we light candles is to remember a miracle that happened to the Jewish people long ago um, in around almost a thousand, no, sorry, over 2000 years ago, um, the Jewish people had a special temple and the temple was almost destroyed. And there was oil that they used to light a special lamp that looked kind of like this one that had eight branches. And the people needed oil to light this lamp and they needed to light it, light it for eight days because that's how long it took to get more oil. But sadly, there was only enough oil left after the destruction for one day. And so they used that oil for one day. And by some miracle, the oil lasted for eight nights. And so that is why we celebrate Hanukkah for eight nights, to celebrate the miracle of the oil. And so that is important to know because some of our special foods that we eat on Hanukkah are also based on the oil miracle we eat um, potato latkes. It's called a latka, but it's really kind of like hash browns. It's basically potatoes fried in a pancake in oil. And we also sometimes eat donuts because those are like dough that's fried in oil and different foods that celebrate the holiday of Hanukkah and the miracle of the oil. So our story tonight is a story about Hanukkah, but it's called the eight nights of Hanukkah. Instead of nights like nighttime when you go to sleep, it is nights with a K, with a letter K at the beginning. And that's like a knight in shining armor. So you can see the knights. Okay, and this story is by Leslie Kimmelman and it's illustrated by Galia Bernstein. Okay. Lady Sadie called on the eight nights of Hanukkah together. Tonight is the last night of Hanukkah. I invited the entire kingdom to celebrate with us, but alas, a dastardly dragon named Dreadful is roaming the countryside, interrupting the party preparations. My children, I am counting on you to fix things with deeds of awesome kindness and stupendous bravery. Challenge accepted, said the knights. I will tame the dragon, said Sir Isabella. Stupendous bravery is my specialty, added Sir Ruggalach, his mouth full of a cookie. Bye, mommy, said Sir Henry and off the night's road. The first night, Sir Alex cantered into a village on his trusty steed. Hark, he exclaimed, 
Methinks I hear a crying child. He jumped from the horse and crouched down beside the boy. What's the matter, young lad? He asked. The dragon scorched my dreidel, said the boy, sniffing. The only Hebrew letter left is nun, which means I always lose. Now let me explain that a dreidel is a special spinning top toy that we play with on Hanukkah. And the top has four sides and each side has a Hebrew letter on it. And if you get one of the letters um, called Gimel, you win. And if you get one of the letters called Nun, you lose. And you either win or lose the chocolate gold coins that you're playing for, that you're betting for. So this little boy is very sad because the dragon scorched off all the letters except the losing letter, so he could only lose. I will make you a new dreidel, Sir Alex said, picking up a piece of wood. He carved a nun first, then a gimel, hay, and shin on the other sides. The letters stand for Nes Gadol Haya Sham, which means in English, a great miracle happened there. And those are the Hebrew letters on the side of the dreidel. The boy spun the dreidel. Gimel, thanks, he shouted happily. Gimel is the best letter of all. It is a miracle. Sir Alex waved as he sped off. Happy Hanukkah, young lad. I shall see you tonight. Meanwhile, Sir Isabella and Sir Rugloff searched high and low for dreadful. Pada thump, pada thump. The second night, Sir Gabriel galloped across the plains on his silver stallion. Hark, he exclaimed, methinks I hear a damsel in distress. A woman was wailing over an enormous pile of potatoes. Why do you weep, fair lady? asked the knight. I must peel these potatoes to make Hanukkah latkes for the townsfolk tonight, she replied. But alas and alack, the dragon has scared off my helpers. Oh no, she's got this huge pile of potatoes to make into potato pancakes, which are latkes, and no one to help her. Sir Gabriel pitched right in. Side by side, they peeled and grated. My work here is done, announced Sir Gabriel, and now you have plenty of potatoes for a mountain of latkes. Thank goodness he was there to help. Meanwhile, Sir Isabella and Sir Rugla looked north, south, east, and west. Show your face, you fire-breathing bully, shouted Sir Rugla. Please, added Sir Isabella. Still no dragon. Mm -mm. The third night, Sir Margaret made her way through a sweet smelling fruit orchard. Hark, methinks I see some sad faced field hands, Sir Margaret exclaimed. What ails you fair people? We need apples for applesauce for the Hanukkah latkes, answered the young maiden, because traditionally we eat applesauce on our potato pancakes. But when we climb the tree to pick them, exclaimed the young man, the dragon flies low and poof, baked apples. Fear not, Sir Margaret replied, my long and noble lance can knock down the fruit you seek. See, there's her lance. Looks kind of like a Hanukkah candle. Many baskets of apples later, Sir Margaret was on her way. My work here is done, she called back. I will see you when the sun goes down. Meanwhile, Sir Isabella and Sir Rugolaf kept hunting for the dragon. They gave chase and got chased, dodging smoke and fire. 
Oh my goodness, scary dragon. Sir Julian, the fourth knight, performed the mitzvah or good deed of taking chicken soup to the sick and keeping company with the lonely. The soup was delicious. The talk was lively. The jokes were funny. Everyone felt better right away because laughter is the best medicine. Just in time for the party, they agreed happily. See, that was such a nice thing to do, to visit the sick and make them laugh. Help if wanted, read the sign Sir Lily, the fifth night, saw in a bakery window. We made dozens of Hanukkah donuts for the celebration, complained the chief baker, then dreadful swooped down and gobbled everyone. Worrieth not, said Sir Lily. She worked alongside the bakers all day long, making sufganiot, or the special Hanukkah jelly donuts. She braved a hot stove, sizzling oil, and sticky, drippy jam. Those things are nothing at all to a knight such as I, said Sir Lily, modestly. The sixth knight, Sir Henry, rode out with the others. He turned his horse around and trotted back to the castle. Why do you not venture out to do deeds of awesome kindness and stupendous bravery? asked Lady Sadie. I stay in and do acts of awesome kindness and stupendous bravery, answered Sir Henry. Oh, see, it's possible to do those things at home. The goodly Sir Henry cleaned the castle till it gleamed. He swept the drawbridge and chased away two ferocious looking lizards. Stupendous bravery. He brought Lady Sadie a cup of hot tea and a fluffy pillow for her tired feet. Awesome kindness. Meanwhile, the seventh and eighth nights, Sir Isabella and Sir Rugloff were feeling discouraged. They just couldn't catch that dragon. They sat thinking and their air got warmer and warmer. <gasps> Uh-oh, dreadful. <gasps> Poof, he disappeared <gasps> and there, was a baby dragon, but you're just a baby dragon, exclaimed Sir Isabella, and my name isn't dreadful, the dragon sniffed. It's Rosie. So Rosie was invited to the Hanukkah celebration. The sun sank in the sky. One by one, the knights returned home. At their big round table, the eight knights of Hanukkah exchanged tales of spectacular deeds and daring do. Before long, the guests began to arrive. Never had the round table been graced by so many heroic knights, nor the castle grounds with so much merrymaking. Oh, it was a fun Hanukkah party, thanks to all the knights. Whoosh! Rosie lit the Hanukkah candles. It was a most excellent Hanukkah. The eight nights of Hanukkah had lit up the darkness of the world with bright light of kindness. Shine on, good nights. Shine on. The end. What a fantastic story. And I, I love the play on words. It was fantastic, thank you. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Next, we're gonna have up Una. Uh, Una is going to share uh, some stories with us. And Una, what do you have to share with us today? So um, today, Floyd, my first book has the same word as one of Rabbi Ariana's words in her book. This book is called Kindness makes us strong. And it's written by a person by the name of Sophie Beer. 
Okay, Wonderful. so I'm going to read two books. This is the first one. Awesome okay. kindness. <laughs> kindness makes us strong. And I love hearing that, that word in the first book. So what? this book starts by saying kindness is saying hello. It can be as simple as that. Kindness is saying hello. Kindness is being patient. Even when you feel like you don't have any patience left, it's kind to find some patience and wait. Kindness is helping. We learned that in the first book about the eight Hanukkah nights. Kindness is cheering. We can cheer on our friends. We can cheer on our family members. We can cheer on people at school, on teams. Kindness is trading treats. As long as it's safe and healthy, it's nice to trade treats every once in a while, especially with your friends that you know. Kindness is giving a boost. When someone needs just a little help to get something out of their reach, we can give them a boost and that's very kind. Kindness is taking turns. Sometimes we want all the turns for ourselves, but we can't, we've got to share turns so everyone has a chance and that's kindness. Kindness is sharing. And you can see in this picture, they're sharing some crayons to make their, their posters. They're sharing paint and paint brushes. Kindness is offering comfort. And offering comfort is so important, especially when someone is sad or they're disappointed or they're feeling lonely. Kindness is visiting. And this person is sick with, with their ankle hurt. And so it's nice to visit someone even when they're hurt. Kindness is reaching out. You can see that this person was all alone. And kindness is going to someone who's all alone and reaching out to them and saying hello. I think that's how we started the book. Kindness is what makes us stronger. So a lot of things make us strong, including the foods we eat and courage makes us strong, but it's important to remember that kindness makes us strong as well. So we can practice kindness to become stronger. And so I have one more book and it has the same word. This is a short book too. And it's by someone whose name you might know, Dr. Seuss. And the character in this book is Horton the Elephant. Some of you might recognize Horton from the Dr. Seuss book, Horton Hears a Who. So this book is called You Are Kind by Dr. Seuss. You are kind. You are an amazing friend. You always listen. Sometimes listening is hard even for grown-ups and kindness really is about listening. If there is a problem, you help fix it. You stand up for what is right. Sometimes it's hard to stand up for what is right, especially if we're the only one standing up for what's right. You teach that Everyone matters. Everyone is important. Everyone. You protect those who need it the most, no matter how small. Even when things look impossible, you might have a big mountain to climb or you might have another task or chore that seems impossible and your goal seems very far away, 
You never give up. Because you care. And the rewards can be unexpected and priceless. It's who you are and what you do. You are kind. The end. Wow. You, you would think that you all coordinated that. I right? know. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and so, you know, in, in thinking about, you know, the two books, they, they really do tie in well together. And, you know, I, I thinking about Ariana, you can unmute your mic, um, the awesome kindness is stupendous bravery, bravery, right? And, and why did you decide to share that book uh, today with us? Well, I was excited to teach the children about Hanukkah. Um, for those of you who don't celebrate, to get to know, um, to get to know a little bit about another religion's holiday this in this holiday season. Um, I also, like Una, wanted to talk about the importance of kindness in these times when everyone is at home and struggling. Um, I think that it's important to remember how much kindness can make a difference, even if you are um, like the, the knight who stayed home, who helped out at home and did acts of awesome kindness by helping his mom and stupendous bravery by chasing off a scary lizard, um, even those things really matter and are so important. Um, and I also, I really like this book. I liked, as you mentioned, Floyd, the play on words with knights and knights, um, like night, like nighttime and night, like night in shining armor. I think that was so fun. And um, I also, um, I also really like this book because I like that it represents um, the knights in all different colors and shapes. And um, I think it's important to note that um, even though we often think of Jewish people coming from Europe, they actually come, Jewish people come from all over the world. There are Jews in Asia and in Africa and in the Middle East. And um, I, so I like that this book represents that. Um, and so I thought that this was um, a really special book. Oh, one other thing I remember um, that I really like about this book is that, um, you know, it shows that things aren't always as scary as you expect them to be. Like the way that um, everyone thought that the dragon was really big and scary, but no one had really seen her. And in truth, she was just little Rosie, the friendly, the small friendly dragon who lit the Hanukkah candles. Yeah, so one of the, um, one of the cutest dragons I've, I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so sometimes <laughs> things aren't as scary as you think until you really get up close and, and meet them. You know, I, I, I did see that, you know, the, the all-inclusive kind of, um, you know, characters that you, knights that you had in the book. And that's just beautiful to see. Uh, it, it, it reminded me of Ezra Jack Keats' uh, book, A, A Snowy Day, uh, which, by the way, put a pen in it. It's supposed to be that tomorrow, yeah, okay, yeah. Just, <laughs> and Thursday. But, but you know, to, to, when I saw that book and to know that he, you know, was a Jewish man and he, you know, created that book, I was just blown away by it. And, um, and I've seen where, you know, he's received a lot of, you know, uh, credit for, you know, being cutting edge at the time. So, you know, kudos to the author and illustrator of that book, Ariana, for doing something similar. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for again, inviting again, me on. Una, and, and so, you know, why did you decide to pick those two books about kindness? Well, they just really jumped out at me because I think that you know, people have been in this pandemic for a really long time and people might be growing tired of listening. They might be growing tired of being patient when they're trying to go to the grocery store or being patient when they're um, trying to have class online and virtual school. And I just 
thought it would be a great reminder, not only for students, but for teachers, for parents, for us and for other adults to remember how important it is to be kind. And the thing about kindness is that it's, it's not hard. It's just a decision. You just have to make a decision in that moment to say, I'm going to choose kindness right now. So I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to scream. I'm not going to say something that's not nice. I'm going to choose kindness. And um, it goes such a long way. And I think our world and our families and our schools and our companies could all use a little more kindness right now. Yeah, good, good. You know, I'm so glad to have both of you ladies on, you know, both of you all, you know, have, have worked in social justice on social justice issues. And Ariana, what, what motivates you to, you know, want to give back in that way? You're muted. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, well, like it mentions in the book, um, it's something called a mitzvah in Judaism to do good things and to give back. A mitzvah means a good deed, but it also means a commandment. And so in the Torah, which is the Jewish people's holy book, it tells us that it's important to um, love your neighbor as yourself and to help the stranger and to do justice and to pursue justice. And so um, that's something that I believe in very strongly, something I always grew up with. Um, my grandmother is a survivor of the Holocaust. And so I know that there are many people um, in her time, she lived in Poland, that who really helped her. And so I, I think about how important it is to give back in that way because my family was helped by people doing doing good deeds and doing kindness um, even when it was dangerous and so I think it's important for me to do as well. That's that that's that bravery that we we talked about earlier. It's very important. And thank you. And Una, what what motivates you? Oh gosh, Floyd. I think um, again, like. Rabbi Ariana said, just being raised with the values of giving back and helping others. It was part of how I grew up. I'm in a family of, you know, a large family. I'm the youngest of seven children. And with our parents, we all grew up supporting one another. Um, being a role model for my children to give back is important to me. And helping connect other adults, helping connect my peers and and business leaders with opportunities to give back is something that I feel very strongly about because um, I believe that everybody truly wants to help. I believe everybody has um, a desire to give back, but sometimes people just don't know how and they don't know where and they don't know, um, maybe they didn't grow up in a family like Rabbi Ariana or I did, and, and maybe they're looking for a way to give back. And so I feel very strongly about finding ways to connect adults, um, especially with opportunities to, to give back and, and do something good in the world. Very good, thank you. And uh, Rabbi Ariana, um, you are the first Jewish rabbi female lady that I've met. What, what made you choose that path to serve? Wow. Um... Well, I, I was inspired at one time when I was at services on a Friday night. I just um, was singing and feeling the beauty of the Sabbath on Saturday, and I had this moment of inspiration, but it wasn't right away that I decided that I really wanted to pursue that path. I thought, oh, that's a crazy idea. I don't know if I really want to be a rabbi. Um, so I continued to pursue social justice work for several years. And um, as I did, I felt that, you know, I, this is the right work for me, but I want to do it through Jewish community. That's important to me to be in Jewish community when I do this work and um, to be helping people. Some of the things that I do as a rabbi are, um, I, I officiate at life cycles events. So whether it's um, a baby being born or someone 
becoming an adult, turning 13 for bar bat mitzvah or doing weddings or even doing funerals, um, I, I really help see people through all different parts of their life. So um, that's really about acts of kindness as well and, and being with people in their most joyful and their most difficult times. And it's very special work to me. So I love to be with people in those times and, and build community together, both in the Jewish community and um, in, the, in the broader community in Harrisburg. Thank you. And, and we welcome you to this area and, and Una, you know, you've been um, the director of Leadership Harrisburg for a number of years. And of course, uh, disclaimer, I graduated from Leadership Harrisburg <laughs> 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 years ago. It's just a wonderful organization. And, and you know, we, we're really fortunate to have you, you know, lead the organization and take it to, you know, far heights. and. You know, can you think of over the years that you've been, you know, the director, one of those aha moments like, wow, because I, I think of you, I can't separate the two, Leadership Harrisburg. <laughs> I know you're so much more than that, but can you think of one of those aha moments like, yes, I, I belong here and I, I see my purpose? I, I Sure. I, I think it was when... Um... When I first went through the Leadership Harrisburg Area class, the concept of servant leadership was introduced to me. And while it, it has been around forever, it was introduced in a um, secular way. There's no uh, religious um, affiliation with servant leadership as a leadership style. And at first I didn't really understand what servant leadership was all about. And then I studied it a little bit more and worked with a lot of people who are practicing servant leadership and felt like this was it. If, if everyone could follow this type of leadership style, our organizations would be outstanding. Our people would feel um, compelled to do their best at organizations. They would feel included. They would feel like they belong in their organizations. And, and so once I kind of, um, realized the power of servant leadership, then I started on my, uh, on this path where leadership Harrisburg area would become the vehicle to bring servant leadership into more organizations. And so I think that was kind of an aha moment that I knew where I was in the right place, where I could um, marry my own personal um, you know, upbringing of giving back and, and making a difference and building relationships with what I do as a profession. <laughs> I get paid to, to do, yeah. you know, this kind of work and to help people build relationships with one another that really meaningful relationships that make a difference in the community. So um, I started with Leadership Harrisburg area uh, in 2007 and um, have really been extremely gratified to to be able to do the work that i do fantastic and ariana i don't know if do you have to jump off one of you all had to jump off or closer yeah i have a busy day but um okay. i really appreciate that we were able to do it again and um <laughs> that i at least got a chance to see you thank boy. you thank you so much we appreciate you greatly Una, you stay on for a second but ariana okay. rabbi ariana thank you so much to you and your congregation for uh, investing in the community in this way and so many other ways. You know, you've had several of your folks on reading, you know, Brooke, Harvey, Friedenberg, and, and Lauren and, and others. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this as well. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure to get to read with you all. Have a great Bye. day. Bye-bye.